Hey boys, today we're gonna re be reviewing this old soccer ball. We're gonna put it through the test. Let's do it! <laughs> Fun fact, did you guys know that before the 20th century, people would use pig bladders as soccer balls? And even farther back than that, back in either the medieval or like ancient Chinese times, anywhere in those time periods, people would use animal skulls or human skulls as soccer balls. I'm pretty glad that soccer ball technology has evolved to where it is today, to where we don't have to use that stuff anymore. All right, now let's fast forward in time to the 30s. So this ball is a replica of a ball from the 30s. It's pretty obvious when you take one look at it. It's A, got a leather cover, and B, when you take a close look at it, it literally has the stitching of an American football as laces right on the right on the cover of the ball. And that's pretty unique. You definitely don't see that anymore. Probably because it just adds such like a lopsided feature to the like in American football, you don't want to be kicking the laces because that'll cause the ball to go all sorts of weird directions. And in soccer, you don't want that. You want a consistent kick on the ball. All right, so this ball has a really nice leather upper, and that is quite a bit different from today's standards because nowadays you just have these really nice synthetic covers on the balls that'll last you ages. And that's exactly the issue I've had with this ball is leather scratches really easy, especially when you're using it on concrete, which I have been for the past like hour or two. And um, I've also found that it's just really slick as well. So it makes it so easy to slide across that concrete and get scratched right up. So a problem with this ball is the durability. I don't know how long it's gonna last you, but what I have noticed is it's actually really great for freestyle. And the reason is, is because like when I'm trying to do a bunch of around the worlds, actually a slick ball is really nice because that ball is able to come off my foot and I'm able to do my around the world so much easier. So that is definitely a plus for uh, using this old school ball. All right, now for the bounce test. Oh, and by the way, these balls are about the same pressure, so theoretically, they should bounce about the same. It actually surprised me that they bounce the same height because when I was using this ball, it just felt like it bounced so much higher than a normal ball. And I think the reasoning behind that is, is it is actually a little bit lighter than a normal ball. And I think that played a factor in my feeling on how it was gonna bounce. All right, so I want to apologize in advance to my buddy Nikita because he gave me the great idea of going out and shooting the ball. But I've been so busy lately, I have not been able to do that. But I've tested it everywhere else. Okay, so now for my final thoughts on the ball. For, for freestyle, I think that that category suits this ball the best because the ball, I love how slick it is and it's great for freestyle and the cover is very soft and nice on your feet. For street soccer though, that's where things start to go south just because I want a durable ball that's gonna last me a while. And with the leather cover, it's, it's just not gonna get the job done. But for regular soccer in the grass, this thing I'm sure would excel pretty good um, just because the lopsidedness wouldn't really be a factor like it's not that noticeable, but I don't think it'd be much of a factor when you're playing soccer. And I'm sure you can get in some insane free kicks with this just because this feels almost like a balloon ball. It's not that light, but it just kind of has that feel to it. So my final score for this ball is gonna be a seven out of 10. And that is the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.